G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Bitcoin video. We've seen a drop on Bitcoin, we've dropped downwards, uh, we've got to talk about that today. We talked about the break from a triangle there, we've also got to talk about the DXY briefly and how we're bouncing on DXY. We're going to talk about the weekly chart, we're going to talk about the monthly chart, and a couple more things as well towards the end of the video we'll get into briefly. I want to discuss AI predictions on the Bitcoin price. This is something that's been kind of trending quite a bit recently on crypto Twitter, crypto YouTube. I'm going to be discussing that and why I don't necessarily uh, agree with the usage of that. And also the fear greed index. And then finally, uh, the psychology of market cycles, all of which I don't agree with the use of uh, in any real way. So quite a bit of interesting stuff to get into there after we briefly dive into TA. Um, but first and foremost, before we get into the video at all, we have an exclusive promotion from BitGet right now for Australian users, okay? So if you're an Australian user on the BitGet exchange, you can get access to this exclusive promotion. Sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment description. If you deposit 500 USDT, you'll get 50 USDT deposited into your account. If you deposit 1,000 USDT, you'll get 100 USDT deposited into your account. This promotion is coming as a response to what's happened with Binance recently in Australia and the UK, uh, in which basically Binance uh, UK and Australian users have been shut out of derivatives trading, or a lot of them have at least. And so BitGet's offering that promotion to get people onto the superior platform, which I deem to be BitGet. Five times lower fees of Binance, uh, non-KYC, the whole nine yards. Sign up using my referral link anywhere in the world. 15% discount on trading fees for life. And of course, that exclusive offer if you're from Australia. So let's dive into the video without further ado. Uh, what we have here is a breakdown structure on Bitcoin. Uh, we've broken down from both of the pink formations here. We said we either had a triangle formation or a, uh, a channel formation of some sort. We've broken down from both of them. We're going to leave the lines in there. We're going to leave the channel lines in there and the triangle lines in there because eventually we might come up and retest them again for resistance. So we'll leave them there for the time being. But as of right now, we're holding support on Bitcoin on this yellow uptrending line, which is stemming from the 23rd of January. Uh, and this is an opinion that I've held for about a week now. I said that basically this was a no trade zone up here, and I still stand by the fact that it was. We did end up breaking down, which was slightly more likely. And now we're holding for support on this yellow line again, which is coming back from January 23rd. Now, if we lose this yellow line, what will happen on Bitcoin is this. If we lose the yellow line, we will also be losing the RSI triangle formation. You can see an RSI support line we're holding right now. If we lose the yellow line right now on Bitcoin that you need to draw in, we'll lose the RSI line, and that will be a prime short position. From that short position, we have no real moving average support, which is why it's a good short position because we'll be trading downwards towards the nearest support. The Gaussian channel and the bull market support band are still quite a bit below. So if we break below this yellow line we're on top of right now, we would be taking a short position down to the nearest support zone at 22.3K or potentially even this nearest uptrending yellow line, which you can draw in from the wick on the 18th of January through to the wick there on the 13th of February. So short position uh, is lining up here. If we lose that line, you can take advantage of that and you can make some profits there. I would say that breakdown uh, is more likely. We have seen uh, bearish uh, Federal Reserve meeting there uh, the other day. Some releases on the, from the Federal Reserve uh, were not very good, and we essentially saw the in, in, the expectations for interest rates, uh, you know, go up in a, in a bearish sense. In the fact that interest rates top bottoming out uh, or topping out, I should say, have been delayed for a couple of months now. Uh, it's gone from I think May to June. It's been pushed back one month. Uh, we haven't seen any more expectation from the market for any extra hikes, though. We're still expecting two more 25 basis point hikes. That's what the market is expecting. So it's not that the um the term it's not that the total rate uh, has been lift, uh, has been expected to be. Uh, sorry, I can't really talk right now. It's not that the total interest rate, the highest point we'll reach, has been lifted. It's just the fact that the 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 amount of time we're going to have to keep it in that region uh, has been extended uh, as per the recent data that's come out uh, yesterday. So anyway, sorry for stuttering there. Uh, yeah, let's get into a bit more of the charts here. We can check out uh, the weekly chart. We can see the fact that we're rejecting quite strongly from 200 week SMA. This is probably one of the main reasons why I think Bitcoin needs to correct some more and why I'm setting up that short position there. Not entering it yet because it hasn't broken down yet, but when we do. Uh, so yeah, rejection from 200 week SMA will probably trend downwards and honestly probably retest this bull market support band at some time before breaking upwards later on uh, in either you know next month or the month after or something like that. I do still think the bottom is in, of course. The one thing we need to be watching, and this is something I've held by, I, I've maintained for quite a lengthy period of time for a couple of weeks. The one thing, the one bearish argument we really need to be watching is the Wyckoff accumulation argument, right? It's the argument that essentially we are on the Wyckoff accumulation pattern. We are basically reaching this peak right here that I just circled. And obviously, if we're following Wyckoff accumulation, we could go downwards and form a new low based off of that. Now, I don't think that argument is valid. Uh, there's many reasons for that. I've discussed it extensively in previous videos. You can check out all my previous videos. I'm not going to 
dive into that at all right now, just waste of your time. Um, but yeah, I'm a believer in the four-year cycle theory and everything that surrounds the four-year cycle theory. I believe the bottom is in, but this is the one bearish argument we need to be watching. If we do end up following the Wyckoff accumulation, we do end up breaking down below critical levels. Say, for example, we break below, uh, let's go to the daily chart and check it out. Say, for example, we break below bull market support band and break below something like 19K, which is all the way down here, this green box. Then we can start taking that argument seriously for the Wyckoff accumulation. And then we can start really considering the fact that, hey, maybe the four-year cycle is wrong. Maybe we actually break the four-year cycle. Until that point, I don't think there's any reasonable argument to be made at all uh, that the four-year cycle is wrong. We've seen one of the strongest Januaries in Bitcoin's entire price history just after the point in which the four-year cycle predicted the bottom perfectly. You know, it, you don't really get much clear, more clear than that. Uh, this correction at this point in time is very healthy. I think this help correction will be healthy until we break down the low, below the bull market support band. And we've got about a you know, a room for error of 16% at this point in time uh, until that starts looking unhealthy. At this point, it's a very healthy uh, correction uh, and we probably need to see it. You know, it's not very often you break out of a range. And of course, the range is 25.2K. Uh, That's the top of the range. It's not very often you break out of a range in the first attempt. So this is a healthy correction at this point in time. Uh, and we're just tracking and we're just going to observe, uh, uh, you know, from now on and, and track to see what happens. But ultimately, I did want to jump into the next part of this video. Uh, and before we do that, just briefly looking over something like the monthly chart, three days until the monthly candle closes. This is something I've deemed as important for quite a long period of time now. Uh, the monthly candle close uh, is important because we have resistance on the monthly chart at 23.4K. That resistance is the red line and we have support at 19.3K. That is the green line stemming from a 2017 all-time high. Now, right now, we are just below resistance. So if we close this monthly candle above 23.4K, that will be extremely bullish. If we don't, uh, that will probably mean we see more consolidation and potentially more correction for Bitcoin in the next couple of months that follows. The DXY has seen a surge to the upside after having a lengthy descending channel formation. We can zoom in on the daily chart and check that out. Right, we have this red resistance line finally broken to the upside and we're breaking to the upside there on the DXY. The DXY is reverse correlated to Bitcoin. And so the correction we're seeing on Bitcoin uh, lines up pretty well with what we're seeing on the DXY in terms of a pump there. So this correction is completely normal uh, and all the charts here are kind of suggesting that it needed to happen. We had very, very much overbought on Bitcoin. If we're looking at the volume, you know, volume was uptrending for a period of time, but it started dramatically downtrending you know, quite early into this pump around mid-January, and we didn't really see it recover from that. So I think this is a healthy correction, as I said before. Uh, and then we can move into the second part of the video. So it's very, very hot today. It's around 36 degrees, so I'm absolutely boiling and losing my train of thought quite a lot here, but just got to get the content out for you guys. Um, without further ado, let's get into the next part of the video. I need some water real quick. Right, we're talking about long-term Bitcoin price predictions and we're talking about AI price predictions. Now, this website here, Coin Price Forecast, this is what I've been seeing thrown uh, through Twitter, thrown through YouTube recently quite a lot. Essentially, it's an AI program. It's a computer program that predicts the price targets for these assets in the future. If we click on what it says for Bitcoin, we can immediately say it's rubbish, right? In 2034, this, this uh, website here predicts the Bitcoin price at 60K. All right, so it's obviously ridiculous because we've just seen the all-time high at 60K uh, in 2021. Uh, and so it's saying we're going to take 13 years from when we got there before to get back there, which is completely ridiculous. If you have any faith in cryptocurrency whatsoever, you believe that's not the case. And you could make the argument, well, oh, okay, maybe the AI is just predicting Bitcoin's going to over, uh, Ethereum's going to overtake Bitcoin. Well, then you go to the Bitcoin, pro the Ethereum price prediction, and you see it's only prediction predicting a 5K Ethereum in 20. 34. So it's obviously uh, an incorrect model here. And if you go to any asset, even something like NEM, which is a dead coin, completely dead coin, it's still predicting that to go upwards since uh, until 2034. And you can start to see very quickly when you click on something like Bitcoin Gold, which is a dead coin again, that when it says Bitcoin Gold is going to go up 300% uh, until 2034, while Bitcoin's only going to go up 250% or something like that, you can see that these models are completely ridiculous. They're based on prior trends. Uh, I don't even know what they're based on, to be quite honest with you, but they're simply incorrect. Don't take anything you see about AI price predictions seriously. That is not how the market worked. If that's, if that's how the market worked, and if these models were accurate, guess what? Everyone would be a bloody billionaire. So it simply doesn't work like that, just based off that logical reasoning. Again, I'll say it again. 
if this worked, if AI could predict the price of Bitcoin, if AI models that were publicly released, I should say, could predict the price of any asset, not just Bitcoin, look at all these stock assets here, commodity prices, right? If AI could actually work and predict these prices well, every single person would be a bloody billionaire because all you need to do is follow what it says. So it's obviously incorrect. Don't take anything you see regarding this in news articles or anything like that seriously. That's one thing I wanted to cover. When we're on the topic of breaking uh, kind of fake... Uh, I should say indicators or something like that. We're going to talk about uh, fear and greed index. This is ridiculous. Don't use the fear and greed index. I'll tell you why. The fear and greed index is literally just a, uh, a basically a terrible version of the RSI. When the price goes up very quickly, right? Fear greed index goes up. When the price goes down very quickly, fear greed index goes down. Yeah, it's based on social metrics as well. But overall, this thing has not been accurate. If you look at what the when the last time this thing said extreme fear, it was on June 18th, right? That was extreme fear. Now, June 18th, obviously, was during uh, the crash here uh, that we saw. Um, what was that from again? That was from FTX, I believe. Sorry, no, it was from Luna, the Luna crash we saw in June back here. Now, let me ask you a question. After a drop of that size, do you really need a website to tell you the market's bearish? No, you completely do not. And it plays into confirmation bias. So, and the same thing back in the bull market, in peak bull market 2021, right? Do you really need a website to tell you the market is greedy? No, you don't. You just need to open your eyes and look at the TA. It's a completely useless website that is oftentimes wrong, that is completely useless in sideways ranges. We can see as of recent, it hasn't been pulling any real fear or greed. It's been in neutral territory for over a month now. So it's been completely useless for that entire period of time. And it hasn't really reached in extreme greed or extreme fear since back here in June 2022. So it hasn't actually done anything useful for over eight months. So throw this indicator out the window. It's completely useless. Learn TA. This is not TA. This is a, a cheap skate way to TA. That's what I like to call it. It's fool's gold in a certain sense. And the same thing with something like the psychology of market cycles. Everyone has seen this chart. Everyone in a market has seen this chart. The chart is, you know, it has some basis in reality. It's definitely good for beginners, but mainly it should be used for understanding how a rally works. You can't really use this chart and, and go to the chart we have currently and point, oh, are we at denial? Are we at complacency? Are we at belief? It's not really going to do anything for you. Just use TA. You know, all of these three things, AI predictions, fear greed index, the, the psychology of the market cycle, it's all just a cheapskate's way to TA. It's complete rubbish. It, it just learn how to analyze a chart and you don't have to rely on random speculative pictures and diagrams and trying to oh are we at optimism i don't know maybe we're at thrill because we had this rally why just use the use the rsi use market patterns use volume use something actually useful that is based on mathematics rather than based on your your eyesight it's completely ridiculous so i just wanted to get that off my chest because i've seen these charts being thrown around so much and i've seen them be thrown around by by massive influencers massive youtubers and i'm here to tell you uh, as i usually am when it, when it comes to these big youtubers they're talking out of their bum. They, they don't know what they're talking about, you know, and, and, and it's completely ridiculous. We shouldn't be taking any of it seriously. The only thing we should really be taking seriously is actual data, such as inflation, such as interest rates, such as, uh, for example, employment rates, things like that, and TA, charting patterns, what the charts look like, what they're doing, volume, RSI, MACD, gorging channel. That's the only things we need. And guess what? Even in that argument, I would actually say TA is more important than something like inflation rates, something like interest rates, something like employment data, because TA is a reflection of that data. The price doesn't just go somewhere randomly. People say as well, Bitcoin will do what it wants. It's like, no, Bitcoin will not do what it wants. Bitcoin acts, everything it does is for a reason. Even the scam pumps, they all have a reason behind it, right? The fact of the matter is this, if the market expects inflation to be higher, the price will trend downwards before that release happens and it will form market patterns that are indicative of that release. So the TA actually really does matter. I don't like when people say things like, oh, Wolf, you look at the charts too much. You need to look at the data. People don't understand. The charts are, ref are a reflection and a speculation on what the data will be. The charts are actually more important than the data. If I had a choice to, uh, to only see the data or only see the charts ever again, I would 100,000% choose the charts. So that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Again, sorry for stuttering uh, and being a bit out of it today. It's, it's...
boiling hot, blistering hot. I'm going to get out so I go to the beach. Uh, and so I'm keen to get this video out so I can go and do that. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Check out the Crypto Academy course if you want to learn how to trade, become a trader, 10 year course. All the information for that is on the website. Check out the BitGet Exchange. Again, if you want to exchange to, to uh, trade cryptocurrency at very low rates. And also check out the VIP group where we trade altcoins on a sub daily basis. We've been extremely profitable. You can check the results for Q4 uh, that we released, obviously, at the start of January. And the uh, Q2 results. Uh, the Q1 results, uh, sorry, for 2023 will be releasing at the end of March, at the end of next month. So get keen for that. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Catch you guys in the next one.